every time I even just get like a little injury to my body or or a bone break or a sprain or something like that, that's like permanent damage. It's never the same. So I don't, why are we encouraging this kind of thing? Oh, you don't like it? Just fucking cut it. Let's just get the surgeons. Now let's get the doctor to pump you full of medicines. I don't understand this. So maybe someone can comment because it's one thing I don't get. You're hanging out in the House of Sunny podcast, where it's always sunny, mostly because of your host, comedian and YouTuber, Sunny Loman. Want to know what Sunny and her friends are thinking about this week? Well, here she is, Sunny Loman. Hey, everybody, welcome to the House of Sunny podcast. If you tune in just because you have a giant crush on Doug, you're out of luck today because he is not here again. And I'm thinking that as a test to see if he's listening, um, I'm going to tell you some secrets about Doug. You know, I've known him a long time. And I'm just going to say that he, I'm just going to tell you one of his secrets, see if he's listening. He actually enjoys women's underwear. And on the weekends, you know, that's what he does. He's actually going to go out and have some Miller Lite uh, to celebrate his fellow underwear wearer, women's underwear wearer. And um, yeah, so we'll see if he's listening. Doug, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I told everybody. But, you know, don't be ashamed of who you are. So I have some things for your, for today a few things we're going to go through um, because Doug's not here. I'm I'm really going to use some articles here. And I, I just want to start with some really some comic relief because this, I saw this story this morning and I laughed my butt off. It was so funny. Delta Airlines pilot is mistakenly handcuffed, <laughs> shoved in shower and interrogated for more than an hour after FBI and DOD agents broke into the wrong Boston hotel room during a training exercise. Oh, my God. I mean, Keystone Cops, am I right, you guys? (laughs) A man was handcuffed and interrogated inside his own hotel room for roughly an hour after law enforcement agents. Can you imagine being this guy? He's just some Delta Airlines pilot. He's fast asleep. It's midnight and these bozos break into his room. I mean, honestly, it must've been really scary and absolutely crazy. Um, After they went into the wrong room during a training exercise, FBI and DOJ agents knocked on the room occupied by the man, a Delta Airlines pilot, according to WBC, and burst in, holding him in cuffs for 45 minutes before they realized their mistake. In case of mis- it, it, the case of mistaken identity occurred just after midnight on Wednesday on the 15th floor of Boston's Revere Hotel. Don't stay there anymore, guys. Oh, they must be pissed. They must be pissed. An FBI official told DailyMail.com their agents were assisting in a DOD mock investigation to simulate a situation their personnel might encounter in a deployed environment. EMS was called to the scene to evaluate the man, and he told the outlet he would he would be speaking with his employer before publicly commenting. Yeah, I bet he would. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys, right? Sources told WBZ that agents knocked on room 1505 late Tuesday evening and demanded to be let in. The unidentified pilot, who was a guest at the hotel, was sleeping. The man, who was said to be in his 30s, woke up and opened the door. The group then barged in and began a nightmare interrogation scenario. So not only are these like rookies, like they're doing their their training exercise. So you're dealing with like a bunch of, of idiots who probably barely know how to put on handcuffs. They barge in, the agents handcuffed him, placed him in the shower. The pilot was handcuffed for more than 45 minutes until the agents realized their mistake, took the cuffs off, and apologized. (laughs) Hotel security was told about the incident and Boston police was contacted. (laughs) They, They literally, I mean, why aren't these people, this is a good point. 
I don't care who you are. If you are an FBI agent and you break into somebody's room and rough them up and handcuff them for 45 minutes, shouldn't you be arrested? I mean, haven't you just committed a crime, even if you've made a mistake? It's like at least a misdemeanor or something, right? You know, they didn't intend it, but they did it. So these are individual American citizens who broke into a guy's hotel room and did this. Whatever their excuse, they did this to that man. It's a crime. Why aren't why aren't they held accountable this way? Police officers who responded were wearing body cameras and were told the FBI and DOJ a, DOD agents were conducting a training exercise. EMS came to the hotel to evaluate the pilot who refused treatment. The Delta employee has not been publicly identified. <laughs> oh my god, though. Poor man, but this is a hilarious story. This is a hilarious story. And I want to tell you something that personally happened to me yesterday just to talk about police. And I'd like to know your opinion about this because I'm not really sure what to think about it. I was pulled over by the police yesterday, and I, I just want to explain my take on police in general. I've always been a big police supporter. I generally have a benevolent view toward police. The whole COVID thing kind of freaked me out. I don't like seeing so many cops comply with this. You know, where were the mass walk-offs? Good police could have banded together easily and walked off and said, we're not going to arrest people at the beach. <laughs> you know, like we're not doing that. Um, there was when you look at Australia and you see how the police just totally turned against their population and you saw bits of that going on here as far as they were pushed in order to do things. So that's concerning. And I think, you know, the left has been successful in getting the good guys to resign. I mean, when you're vilified constantly and you run the risk, not only of being accused of racism and maybe being fired and losing your career forever, but now you run the risk of going to prison just for doing your job, like with the George Floyd thing. So I would quit. I wouldn't want to be involved in that. I wouldn't want to risk jail because people are emotional and they, they're they looking for political prisoners, <clears throat> scapegoats and stuff. Um, That's not cool. So my my attitude is favorable, but I can see that there's a problem. And oh, one of the incidents that really freaked me out was, <laughs> do you remember in Colorado, there was a rally to support the cops in the midst of the BLM thing? It, it was literally a rally to support the cops. And BLM showed up, counter-protested, and they started assaulting the the people on the stage. A couple people, like a couple BLM people rushed the stage and um, there's video of it and everything. And the cops just stood there. They didn't do anything. So F them is sort of been my attitude. I live in a town. I live in Laguna Beach. There's, I think it's a population of about 18,000 people. So it's technically a small town and we have a small town community police department. And I have had two interactions with them so far, both unfavorable. Like both, I, I felt sort of like, a little disgusted. Um, the first one I'm not going to get into because I'm unclear about the law in California. It's weird, you know, how laws are just so strange here. And I was going to go down to the police department and talk to, they actually came to my house. My neighbor, I'll just tell you briefly, my neighbor wanted some guys to come on my land and do a survey and like pound stakes and shit. And he didn't call and ask us. He just wanted them to be able to just come on. And for some reason, he had the cops come over and basically accompany these people onto my property without asking me. And I, and this happened, and I'm like, wait a sec, this is trespass. How can they be promoting trespass? It was confusing. So that's confusing. I, you know, and it wasn't like anything weird, but last night I'm driving home from, from uh, driving my daughter home from school, small town. My daughter, uh, I didn't really even know this, but she was kneeling on her seat with the lap belt around her waist, but kneeling in her seat and sticking her whole body out the window. <laughs> okay, 
unsafe. And if I'd known exactly what she was doing, I thought her head was just outside the window. I didn't, couldn't really tell what the heck she was doing. We got pulled over. Fine. First cop comes out and he, and he, and I'm like, what the hell could you have possibly pulled me over for? Because I, I'm like literally driving five miles an hour in this small town from stop sign to stop sign, you know, creeping along this, these like small town streets. You don't go fast. There's nothing. There's no violations I could even imagine. I stop at all the stop signs. Guy gets out, comes to the door, and he's very nice and he explains, we pulled you over, pulled you over because your daughter we didn't know if your daughter had her seatbelt on or not. And she was hanging out the window <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay. So now I realize what has just happened. But the second cop car comes cause they need two cop cars to deal with this apparently. And this guy is a little bit older guy comes out and he's pissed. He is so pissed. And he starts yelling at me and uh, he starts yelling mostly at my daughter in this very stern, like angry dad way. And she's like crying. I mean, he made her cry. <laughs> he pounded, you know, he was telling her all these scary stories. Like I've seen, you know, your your head will get smashed and your car flipped over, your head will get smashed and blah, 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 blah. Your mom could lose custody of you because this is child endangerment, $500 ticket. You don't want to give your mom a $500 ticket, do you? It was super intimidating. She's in tears. She's eight, Right. Um, did it have to be like that? Like, I, I realized that we were doing something bad and I actually appreciated that they pulled me over because I don't want my daughter hanging out the window. But do you feel like maybe this was an overreaction and maybe cops need to remember who the fuck they are and who the fuck they serve? I am not their child and my daughter is not their child. I am a member of the community. I fucking pay their salary. So treat me with some fucking respect. That's how I feel. And I'm not being treated with respect. And literally all of my interactions with cops prior to this have been 100% positive where I felt like they were, with the exception of like one um, traffic cop on the freeway who was yelling at me to try to get me to admit that I was speeding and was frustrated that I didn't admit it because I have a a very cool stepfather who's a lawyer who who once gave me the best advice that I ever had, which was never volunteer any information. So I was prepared for this tactic of like trying to get me to say, you know, how fast were you going? Well, how fast do you think you were going? You were going so fast. How fast do you think? Well, what do you think? You know, no, I wasn't going to answer it. He was frustrated and he let me go. He, he was a jerk, but that was like literally my whole life. That was my only, I've been, you know, pulled over maybe 10 times or had cop interactions, maybe 15 times always positive. So except for that one. So since coming to California, it's, it hasn't been so good. What do you guys think though? Um, you know, is the world is getting scarier. It's more dangerous for them. They're vilified, they're beat up. You know, it's really, maybe, is it more of this us and them kind of stuff that the, that the, those in the, in power over us have managed to create? Is this why that's happening? Um, he seemed really angry with us. So I just think he should have taken a breath and realized he's dealing with a child, you know, and also a customer in a way like, or a citizen, let's put it that way. Um, I deserve some respect. I don't, you know, I don't need to be yelled at. I can be talked to. I was absolutely happy. They, the first guy was great. It was the second guy. Why do they need two fucking guys? I'm like surrounded by cop cars. Like they're literally blocking me and super intimidating and not necessary. I'm just a fucking woman with an eight-year-old with a lot in her mind trying to get home. My eight-year-old does something dumb. And by the way, I grew up in a generation where you could ride in the back of a pickup truck, no seatbelt, like you could be flung out and uh, admittedly very dangerous, but you could do that and no one could pull you over because it was not fucking against the law. So like human, human species went forward, even though we were all doing super dangerous things. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm glad that there are seatbelts for us uh, and everything, but let's just get over yourself. This is not necessary to be so, to overreact like this. 
they seem to be in a trend where they are overreacting. And I don't know if police departments are hiring cops now, you know, their their criteria have changed because it's hard to get good people who want to do this job. So they're taking the dicks, you know, they're taking the dickheads they wouldn't normally take because normally you'd want cops who were calm people who were able to control their freaking emotions, probably more than most people. Um, very stoic people. Um, and now we're getting the hotheads. Fucking great. Love it. All right. Uh, let's move on to a different topic. Anyway, I meant I meant that first part to be funny. Fucking DOG, DOD and FBI break in on some poor sap. Let's arrest that those guys for doing that. They committed a crime, right? Um, okay. I want to talk about the transgender stuff, uh, the beer cans and all that. I wanted to highlight a clip because I don't, not enough people have, have shown this. Lady C actually finally broke her silence about the trans thing. And here's a woman, you know, if there's any kind of, if there's anybody out there who has some experience and Lady C is a relatively conservative person politically, not totally, but you know, she's on the, She's on the conservative side, but she's an obvious, she's an intersex person. She's got something to say about this. This is a woman who, this is her claim. She claims that she was born where you could go in either direction. So that's technical intersex. And what they have to do in that moment is pick for you. And they picked for her. And she said that back then they used to always pick boy because they, they presumed that people would rather be boys. It was a, it was a better life. Um, so if you could choose, you would choose boy. But she was really a, a girl, and they they chose boy for her. And tw 20 years later, she had to get surgery to kind of right the wrong. However, she registers kind of masculine to me. So it may be that she does have gender dysphoria or did have gender dysphoria. And maybe there's a, a true gender dysphoric. But nevertheless, she's leading a good, productive, solid life as a female and has since she was 20 years old and she's in her, she's got to be like 70. Um, so I believe that she is a successful transition or uh, whatever her issue was medically something she's on, on the spectrum. She is feminine. So she said that no one was surprised when she, when she said, I'm really a girl, because she was always very girl-like. She walked like a girl. She talked like a girl. She liked girl things. She was never, ever boyish. Her family was not surprised. So that's her background that I have read in her book. So here's what she had to say about this issue. And I'm I'm going to, I think I'm going to play the whole thing and I'll react to it. And then we'll get into the the beer stuff, the Dylan Mulvaney and the, and the Miller Lite. I think it's, I really want to talk about that, but I want to set this up by showing her opinion about the whole trans thing, which I feel is very balanced. Um, as someone who's had surgeries before, she's grateful that these surgeries exist uh, for her. She's grateful of the technology. She, there are many, many people like her, uh, not you know a huge amount, but it's good for certain people, I guess, is what she's trying to say. Um, but let's listen to her tell her own story here. She, she doesn't get into her own details and she won't, but she has, I think, a really good way of looking at this whole thing. So let me play it for you. Just share my screen here. Too bad Doug's not here to comment since he likes the lady's underwear. He could, he also would have some interesting <laughs> insights. Right, Doug? However, I have sat back for some time now and listened to the rantings and ravings and idiocy and stupidity and quite frankly offensive nonsense promulgated by, by opinion makers whose ignorance is truly astonishing and i am now referring to people on both sides of that debate some of them make points that they do not fully understand the significance of or the basis upon which they are making those points in my opinion Harry and Meghan have absolutely no right oh. through Archie Well or Archie Well. She's talking about this came up for her. She's a royal, you know, she responds, she reports on royal stuff. This came about because Harry and Meghan funded 
through their charity over in the United States in their California mansion, funded through their charity, a United Kingdom program to create a school like a, like a, uh, where boys will not be boys. Um, it, it's some kind of creepy. Anyway, that's what she's commenting on. Well, however, they're going to pronounce it today to be entering the debate and, and to be making through various aff affiliations with various organizations uh, that they want to influence the, the fact that they now want children in primary schools to be taught about gender. But I'm going to tell you, as one of the very few people in the world who actually really is in a position to speak about what gender really constitutes and what it's really about, having had the unfortunate experience I did at birth and having, oh, before birth, I suppose you could say, but anyway, whatever, and having been brought up the way I was, and although I'm no medical expert on the subject generally, I'm going to make a few valid points which need to be made. I've never seen Lady C get this worked up. This is like she is so worked up about this, so it's kind of fun. There have always been in Western society two genders, masculine and feminine. Muta gender is the third. It is the third. In the language, there are masculine, feminine, and neuter in certain languages. We are now being told that there are 72 different genders. And we are being told that people wish to be known by different pronouns. Well, I'm very civilized and I am polite enough that, for instance, I did a TV show called Celebs on the Farm with a very nice drag queen. And we all got along like a house on fire. And when Cheryl was in the full regalia and the makeup and all the rest of it. We all called Cheryl she. And when she wasn't in the full regalia, we called him he. He was not, now this is just politesse. In my opinion, and I was asked to debate this uh, at the Oxford Union quite recently, and I declined to do so. But I'm going to say it now because I'm getting heartily sick and tired of every ignoramus poking their awe into something they know nothing about. There are basically two sexes, male and female. XX and XY are the chromosomes. Chromosomes were only recently discovered. When I was born, they didn't even know about chromosomes. That tells you how recent chromosomes are. However, within XX and the XY, there is a hugely wide range because chromosomes are not the only constituent parts of sex and or gender. Hormones affect, affect the way a fetus develops. There have been studies done that indicate that transsexuals are actually people who have one set of chromosomes but due to hormonal development in utero, they develop effectively the brain of the opposite sex. Now, there are other, so you could say that arguably transsexualism is the most extreme form of intersexuality. But there are many other forms of intersexuality, XXY, XYY, loads of other chromosomal differences. And you have, for instance, ang absolute androgen insensitivity syndrome, where the fetus, which is XY, so is biologically male, develops because it is androgen insensitive. That means it will not accept male hormones. So it I'm just going to forward a little bit average here. Average hormones, female hormones. We are all, to an extent, are uh, neither purely one sex or the other, if you look at it like that. But we all basically fall into one of two sexes. And the few people who, because of something that goes wrong in the gestational period, don't, are called intersex. And they then, if, nowadays, because of the advances of the surg surgical advances, they can be approximated into the gender that they really ought to have been in. One thing I wonder about this, though, like, let's say you are born 
in a male body, but you have, because of hormones or whatever, you have the brain of a female. Is it really important for you to, you know, have mutilating surgeries? Why can't you just present as a female, be be feminine, um, you know, be gay or whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is. Why can't you just act accordingly? Why do you have to change your body? Uh, this I don't understand because, um, you know, medical surgical intervention is so extreme and dramatic. Anytime you are cut, you have scar tissue, you have potential infections, you have nerves and muscles and areas that just don't work the same. You, you've got continuing other problems. In the case of people taking hormones, you have, you, you know, doctors do not understand hormones and how to balance them. And everybody has a different baseline and bodies are so like, why can't you, why can't an intersex person just be what they are and, and just make do, you know, like they did before surgeons got involved. If people were born like this, they just made do and they were what they were. And I mean, is that so miserable to not have surgery? It's like, if I'm born with a nose, I don't like, and I, I really hate my nose and I'm super self-conscious about it. And let's say it's a huge freaking honker. It's like a freaking, um, uh, what's that Rostan? Cyrano de Bergerac nose. Like, let's say it's like super out there. Yeah, I can get a nose job today. I can get a nose job. But 100 years ago, I couldn't get a nose job. And I just lived with it. And life went on. Today, we see women mutilating their faces with fillers and implants, men too, and facelifts and brow lifts and like beautiful young women who are models or in order to become models, mutilating their faces, they're having surgeries and they, they look fine and everything, but there are scars in there and, and there are, maybe they're going to get headaches or, you know, I don't know. But every time I even just get like a little injury to my body or, or a bone break or a sprain or something like that, that's like permanent damage. It's never the same. So I don't, why are we encouraging this kind of thing? Oh, you don't like it? Just fucking cut it. Let's just get the surgeons. Now let's get the doctor to pump you full of medicines. I don't understand this. So maybe someone can comment because it's one thing I don't get. And as I say, with absolute antigen insensitivity syndrome, they are women, even though they are XY. So it's not as straightforward as just hormones. However, I'm going to tell you from my own personal experience now, and not only my personal experience, but my observations. I'm going to use, I'm going to start off not with myself, but with Mickey's puppy, Diesel. Mickey gave birth to four puppies. The first was stillborn, two girls and a boy. Diesel entered the world. Whoa, I'm a big, strong, powerful man. He oozed masculinity from the moment of his birth. There was no doubt that Diesel was a boy. And he has grown up to be hyper-masculine. That is nature. Now, to go on to my personal circumstance, when I was born, because they didn't have the techniques that are available nowadays, and the masculine gender was regarded as the superior gender, girls born with my defect were brought up as boys. It changed within a few years of my birth, but that was the reality. There was never any doubt in my mind or the mind of anybody who knew me. That I'm I was going to forward this part because I kind of explain natural. this. I was never interested in sport. Still, I'm a real tomboy. And you, me, thank you very much. But no, thank you. I still play with my dogs. I think it is an iniquity that the educational system is trying to interfere with the natural development of children when they don't know what they the damage they are doing and the potential for the damage they are doing. Children should be allowed to develop naturally. I have two sons and they didn't have a father and they are both masculine and they are both straight. Nobody influenced them. This was a matter of nature developing. Why should any educational authority be teaching children about gender in primary school? I'm here to tell you, having lived it, 
if there is a problem, it manifests itself pretty early, and the child knows it, and the child will tell the parents. Now, some parents don't handle the situation well. Mine certainly didn't. But it doesn't. Another commercial. It must have. But it doesn't alter the fact that the educational authorities have nothing whatsoever to do with this, nor should they. Everybody, everything in life has a maturation point. Until the age of puberty, children are basically new to gender. That doesn't mean that they're not aware of their gravitation to one gender or the other, but they are not sexualized. They become sexualized biologically at the age of puberty. Until then, they are quite rightly not biologically sexualized. This is the way nature set it up. Who are these people? What gives them the right? I mean, my, the first 21 years of my life were damaged, if not totally destroyed, by all sorts of medical experts who didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And when they did, were happy to take my father's money and try to sh and lock me up in a hospital and give me shock treatment and shoot me up with hormones of the opposite sex. I mean, that is real abuse. Do you think I'm unique? Sadly not. There's the famous Dr. John Money case of John Joanna, and they both ended up committing suicide. And Dr. John Money was supposed to be one of the world's experts on the subject. He was a Johns Hopkins. And if he and the doctors stand with me caused such damage, when at least they had some medical knowledge, how dare these Harrys and Megans of this world try to have supposed experts who don't know what they're speaking about interfere with children? I'm going to wrap it up really simply. A woman is somebody who has a vagina. A man is somebody who has a penis. If you are a transsexual and you wish to surgically alter yourself to accord with your internal personality, I'm not arguing with that. However, until you do it and have a vagina, you're a man. You're a man who wants to become a woman, but you're still a man. And thereafter, I have nothing against transsexuals being as accepted in the gender that they end up being with surgical advances. Now, this gets into a huge debate in terms of when it is appropriate to intervene and when it is not appropriate to intervene. And that is not a fit subject for discussion here now, because we are getting into the complexities of a very specialized subject that it doesn't help to have too much outside interference involved with them. And I'm not getting into that. I'm not a specialist on that subject. And although I do have rather more knowledge of it than the average person because of my situation, which although it wasn't the same, it means that I can understand the dilemmas they had. And I'm also going to say right here and now, I fully support JK Rowling. And who doesn't like it can lump it, because the trans lobby seems to have hijacked transsexualism and turned it into something that it is not. Because if transsexualism is the most extreme form of intersexuality, it is a valid medical condition. On the other hand, if it is men dressing up as women and getting fake tits and fake, fake faces and then deciding that they're going to keep their original organs, and we are to call them women, and sorry, they are transvestites. Now, I accept that there are parallels between a pre-operative transsexual and a transvestite. Intent becomes the issue. And no, I do not accept that a transvestite is the same as the gender that they are presently representing. As I say, with Cheryl Hole, we were very happy to call her she. It would have been ridiculous to do anything else. That's politesse. But when you have doctors losing their practice certificates in this country because they refuse to agree with the medical profession that somebody with a beard and a penis should be called a woman, I'm sorry, anybody with a beard and a penis is a man as far as I'm concerned. If the man with the penis is a pre-operative transsexual. I'm happy to say, yeah, he's a pre-operative transsexual. But until the point that he's had everything 
altered. I'm sorry, he's not a woman. So I've now plunged into the whole thing in a way that I never really did intend to. But I'm doing it because how dare Harry and Meghan. First of all, Harry is the absolute example of a man who is, I think she would say in Jamaica, a man Paolo. He's a mouse of a man. How can you respect somebody like him? I mean, look at his body language. His body language is anything but masculine. I mean, several people have asked if he's secretly gay. And quite frankly, I can see why they've asked it. Because he has a body language of a very desexualized child. If he is the example of masculinity, well, you can understand why Megan likes bananas so much. Let's <laughs> All right. That's probably enough. So... I, I love hearing that word transvestite again. We've lost that word in our language. There's no such thing as a transvestite anymore. They're all trans transgenders. Um, they're really changing our language a lot. Like everybody's queer. Everybody's queer. Everybody's on a spectrum. There's no male and female. There's no transvestites. There's only transsexuals. Tra calling them a transvestite is an insult. But these are literally men who just like dressing up like a woman. And that is what Dylan... Mulvaney is, in spite of the fact that he's had his face shaved, you know, his bones shaved down to resemble more of a female face shape. Um, in spite of the fact that he's wearing, like, he's stuffing a bra and dressing like a like a woman. I and and when I say dressing like a woman, like he's not really dressing like a woman. He's dressing like. I I mean, at times he dresses like a woman, but. He's dressing like a flamboyantly gay's idea of what a woman is. Like it's, it's so transvestite. It's not female. It's not uh, like a woman. Um, this whole idea of who should go to, you know, if you should ever be go to a woman's prison. I suppose I could support a a fully transformed male body you know a fully transformed transsexual going into a female prison if they literally didn't have a penis like like uh, lady c says um but even then it's just kind of creepy like I, I don't i don't know maybe there has to be some separate separate deal for that uh but that's like a whole other issue let's talk about the beer can thing because that's what's going on in our culture this week is miller i think it was miller budweiser budweiser light uh made Dylan Mulvaney their spokesperson. Um, and people are pissed off about it. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to share the screen again and show you this article. So, go to my Twitter, my bookmarks. Um, here's the video. We'll just watch the, the ad here real quick. So, I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports. And I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money, too. Love ya! So, all right, I'm sure we've all seen this. And and to me, this is like, this reminds me of, do you remember that? piss Christ statue. It's like uh, peeing on Jesus or something. That's what this feels like. It's because beer and and March Madness, like these are male things. I don't know if Bud Light is a male thing. It's kind of a female thing, but um, it's definitely a demographic that I could see getting, you know, people who drink Ooh. beer and go to sports, like they're not going to like this. And so it really is like a slap in the face and it's a it's a provocation and we i listen to a lot of james Lindsay. i encourage all of you guys to i keep talking about him i'm, I'm obviously a huge fan girl but he 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 warns us and reminds us these are provocations they are trying to provoke a reaction from us and someone else on twitter made kind of a good point how do you feel about this i i saw this and i thought well that's that's kind of true um, it's so important to choose your battles. 
Your target's reaction is the real target. All the uproar about beer makes the right look silly. And here he he shares a tweet by a leftist, obviously, who says, imagine being mad ab- about gay beer can. I mean, that's like, and then James Lindsay has been saying all week, you know, you can't just like boycott beer. It's not really, the company is being held hostage by a cartel. There is an ESG you know, the the oligarchs, the elites are forcing these companies to do activities that show their ESG, that help their ESG score. If they don't comply, they lose suppliers, they lose contracts, they lose funding, they lose credit lines, or a bank won't, won't give them a credit line. Um, it It's really hard on them. They are incentivized financially to hire Colin Kaepernick to hire this guy to to do all of this woke stuff. That's what that is the truth of what is going on in this country. So attacking these companies, this is what James Lindsay says, attacking these companies isn't really worthwhile. We can apply as much pressure as we want, bottom up. We're not going to make that big of a difference in their financial bottom line until we start addressing the fact that they are being held hostage themselves by this cartel. And then James Lindsay had this thread today because after all this beer boycotting, he says, conservatives, which major airline will you pretend to boycott? Maybe United, which isn't even telling the most exciting thing it has to do last year to keep its perfect corporate equality index score. Lots of free tickets to pride activists, I hear. So here's United's, you know, he posts he posts proof of United's, um, you know, pandering to this stuff. And then in this thread, he posts every other airline. Or will it be Texas-based American Airlines? Or should it be Delta? Haha, ha, Southwest 2. <laughs> like he literally shows they're all doing it. And they're all doing it for the same reason. So he argues, quit with the bullshit, go after the ESG, go after the target. Um, So I think that's important. And then the other thing he says is he believes that Dylan Mulvaney is a very, very, very specifically been chosen and created to create like a, like a drag Floyd, like a trans Floyd, where either he will be hurt or he will kill himself. And it will be very public that he received all this hate and so much hate. And then he killed himself and see what happens, you know, and they're so good at turning this crap around on us. And all we do is get led by the nose. You know, I was thinking people have also been saying that Trump's arrest this week was front page news. But meanwhile, like Wisconsin Supreme Court just went woke And nobody knew about it till after it happened. Like nobody, the press wasn't covering it. Nobody was pouring money into the coffers of the campaign of the judge who wasn't woke. Nobody was bothering, you know, a smaller, a small amount of people were bothering to deal with it. It's not front page news. It's important for the next presidential election. And we're totally, totally focused on the media narrative. We are literally pawns. And we have to stop being pawns. We have to stop being pawns. All right, let's see what else I have for you here in my... I thought this was interesting. Okay, historical obesity rate by state. I'm going to start it over. So it starts at 1985. For those of you listening, I'll try to describe this, but you really have to watch this thing. Um, 1985, this is the first map. There's like no obesity. Zero to nine percent obesity is in a handful of states. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven states. Uh, ten to fourteen is in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight states. The majority of the United States map clear of obesity. Nineteen eighty-five. That wasn't that long ago. Okay, watch this go. Every year, more, more more, more. By early 1990s, all states have some obesity. And now we're getting into half the country has like 15 to 19% obesity. 
as the years tick on more and more, now there's hardly a state left that's below 10%. We're into the 20, 25% by the early 2000s. Most of the map is 20 to 25% by 2000. So from 85 to 2000, that's 15 years, we went from almost no obesity, zero to 9%, to 20 to 25%. What the fuck, guys, right? And even in, in the early 2000s, we have a few states that are already in the 30% range. Okay, it gets worse. Years are ticking by. Now we've got some 30, 35% states. By 2010, we have a huge cluster of states. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine states, 30 to 35%. Not a single state there's one state that's below 20%. Everybody else is above 20% by 2010. This is a country that didn't used to be obese just 25 years prior. Going up. Now we're getting some first 40 percenters in the 2015. And at 2020, we are, boom, we've got... Half the country, 35 to 40% obese. The other half, 20 to 30% obese. One state is still 20 to 25%. Everybody else is higher than that. One state, Colorado, 20 to 25%. Everyone else is fat. I don't even know if it goes to, no, it doesn't go beyond 2020. So that is, oh my God, is that an epidemic? I think that's an epidemic. Because obesity is really dangerous and it's it, it's killing people. What I wonder, I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be xenophobic or what do you, I don't even know what you'd call this. People are going to call this racist. I don't mean racist. I'm talking about an influx from South America. South Americans tend to eat a lot of fried foods. Culturally, they tend to be a little chubbier. It has our immigration caused these numbers to go up. Mm. Maybe, maybe a little, but most of it, I mean, go to any, go to any mall and you'll see a ton of obesity there. So uh, from all the races, black, white, Hispanic, um, except Asians, Asians are still skinny. <laughs> you go Asians, uh, see how long that lasts. <laughs> so what do you guys think about that? Why are we getting so fat? Um, 1985 to the present. Obviously, the food pyramid is bullshit. But when are we turning this around? When are we going to choose health? I'm really worried about it because I know from firsthand experience how jacked up our medical system is. How, I, I mean, this has got to be one of the reasons why our uh, longevity rates are declining. Not just, you know, COVID and the vaccines and things like that, not just suicides and fentanyl overdoses, but obesity is out of control in this country. And now, of course, what are we doing? We're celebrating it, right? Um, but you also see a rise of the fitness movement in a way. I mean, in 1985, I think Jane Fonda's aerobic thing was super popular. So people were really into doing aerobics and working out and um, and they weren't even fat then. So it was more like getting really skinny, maybe. I don't know, like going from normal to skinny. Um, but now it's out of control, out of control, obesity. I, it's in kids. It's in kids. That's when it, you really know we have a problem when you see so many children that are chubby. Um, these are kids who are active kids too. They play soccer, they do these things, but they're just eating so much junk, so much sugar. It's really hard to keep your kids away from it. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens, but keep your eye on that one and uh, get fit, guys. If you're out there and you're overweight, get fit. You do not want to be sick as you get older. You do not want to end up in the medical system because it will kill you. It is, I am a very tough patient, you know, personal advocate for myself. I've had to become my own doctor. They've almost killed me so many times I can't even... I can't even tell you. They've ruined my life in a lot of ways with with drugs that ended up 
causing just really terrible side effects, drugs that didn't even help me. So um, really do not put yourself in these people's hands. It, it's, it, it's so bad. You, it's gotten so much worse since Obamacare too. It just keeps getting worse and worse. As people are getting fatter and fatter, the medical system is getting less and less rational and capable. And you're going to die, man. So go to the gym and put down the donut. All right. That's all I have to say for today. Nice lecture. Hopefully next week, Doug will be. Oh, next week, I'm going to be traveling. It's spring break for my kid. So we're going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to try to do a podcast from Hawaii. <laughs> we'll see if I can manage that. I'm going to I'm going to make the attempt. I'm trying to be more regular. So even when Doug doesn't show, obviously I'm doing the show and you guys get get to benefit from that um missing Doug like I do. But um we'll see. I'm going to try to do one next week cuz I'm trying to stay consistent for you guys. Um that's it for today. So maybe next week from Maui, maybe not, maybe I won't be able to do it and it'll just be the week after, but I will do my best. And please in the comments, guys, tell me what you want to hear me talk about. Tell me what you think about what I covered today. I feel like a lot of it is open-ended. What do we do about police? What's going on with them? What's your take? And this Dylan thing, do we boycott Bud or do we try to figure out how to attack the cartel, the ESG cartel? Uh, all right. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week, everybody. Take care. There is a house called the House of Sunny. It's filled with satire and fun. It's been the demise of bad ideas. Perspectives you may lack. It's concise and right and achieves world peace. Guaranteed all your money back. <laughs> Last time, ready?